My name's Isabella. I'm standing below the historic Ford's Theater, where President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in 1865. Below the theater is the Ford's Theater Museum, where you will learn the story of Abraham Lincoln's presidency during the Civil War. Today, some friends and I are going to show you a few highlights from this remarkable collection. As you enter the museum, you will see a mannequin that shows how Abraham Lincoln was dressed when he arrived in Washington. It's pretty different from the appearance of a stovepipe hat that you might expect. In February 1861, Lincoln's advisors heard a plot to assassinate the president when his train to Washington stopped in Baltimore. The advisors convinced Lincoln to wear a disguise and sneak into the Capitol at night. Some newspapers called Lincoln a coward for sneaking in, but he arrived safely. Now, Anaya will tell us what life was like in the White House. During the 1860s, Washington City was seen by many as unclean and chaotic. Cattle wandered freely around the city, the Washington Monument was unfinished due to lack of funds, and the Capitol Dome was still under construction. Office seekers loitered at the White House. These people waited for President Lincoln in the hopes he could offer them a job. During the Civil War, Mary Todd Lincoln, the president's wife, made it her mission to change the executive mansion from a rundown building to a sign of the Union's power. She convinced Congress to grant her $20,000, more than $500,000 in today's dollars, to repair and refurnish the White House. The museum features some of the items she purchased and other objects from the White House, including images of the Lincoln sons, Willie, Tad, and Robert, the Lincoln's son, Eddie, died before the Lincolns moved to Washington, and Willie died during Lincoln's time in the White House, putting even more strain on the Lincoln family while the Civil War raged on. Lena will tell you how the lives of hundreds of thousands of African Americans were affected by the war. Just past the White House artifacts is Freedom Road, which marks major events on the country's path to emancipation. At the time of President Lincoln's first election, there were about four million slaves in the United States. Lincoln hated slavery, but he didn't believe he had the legal authority to end it. With the Union's victory at Antietam in September 1862, Lincoln was finally able to announce his plan to free the slaves. In January of 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation went into effect. The proclamation freed all slaves living in rebel states and allowed African Americans living in the Union to serve in the military. More than 180,000 African Americans would sign up to fight for the Union. The museum also features two of President Lincoln's most famous speeches, the Gettysburg Address on November 19, 1863, and Lincoln's second inaugural address on March 4, 1865. Did you know that John Wilkes Booth, the man who shot President Lincoln, was in the crowd watching him deliver his second inaugural address? This took place just one month before the President was assassinated. Hi, I'm Josh. My favorite parts of the museum are the stories and artifacts of the conspirators. By 1864, the tide of war was shifting towards a Union success. A group of Confederate supporters led by John Wilkes Booth planned on creating a Southern victory by kidnapping the President. They met at Mary Surratt's house, less than a mile from the White House. However, when Booth learned that Abraham Lincoln was attending Fort Cedar on April 14, 1865, he decided to kill him instead. That same night, Booth sent fellow conspirators David Harold and Lewis Powell to kill the Secretary of State William Seward at his house. Fortunately, Seward survived the attack, but Harold and Powell were later tried and hanged. Booth put George Atzerodt in charge of killing Vice President Johnson. Fortunately, he got scared and never made it past the lobby of the Kirkwood House Hotel, where Vice President Johnson lived. Here you can see some of the artifacts that was used by the conspirators. Some of the more famous items are the diary, the switchblade, and compass that Booth carried with him when he escaped after the assassination. You can also see the knife that he used to stab Major Henry Rathbone, one of the President's and Miss Lincoln's guests at the theater that night. Finally, the museum contains the 44 caliber Derringer that Booth used to shoot Lincoln. Just a single bullet from this gun can send an entire nation in the morning and change the world of history forever. Now, Nadia will show you a few more artifacts during the night of the assassination. 
On April 14, 1865, Abraham and Mary Lincoln attended a performance of Our American Cousin here. The theater's owner, John T. Ford, decorated the box seats where the president and his guests would sit. The president arrived at the theater wearing this suit. When Booth entered the box to assassinate President Lincoln, he used a piece of a broken music stand to jam the door shut. After shooting the president and stabbing Major Rathbone, Booth jumped from the box to the stage, but a spur on his boot caught on a Treasury Guard flag that Mr. Ford had used to decorate the box. The orchestra master, William Withers Jr., tried to stop Booth from escaping the theater, but Booth attacked him and slashed his coat. At this point, the president was still alive, but doctors knew he would not survive for long. They carried him across the street to the Peterson's boarding house, where his blood stained this pillow. After visiting the museum, you can go to the theater to see where the assassination took place. Today you've seen just a few highlights. I hope you enjoyed your brief peek into the Ford's Theater Museum. To find out more, visit www.fords.org. We hope you plan a visit to see for yourself. Where, where Lincoln's, Lincoln's legacy lives. lives.